Okay, and I'm going to explain more about how to design an annual training program. An annual training program is also referred to as a macro cycle, which means you have one full cycle of a year during which you want to develop certain components of your clients, um, which might be their strength or their flexibility or um, their cardiovascular fitness. And you also want to ensure that during that cycle, you achieve the goal you set out as being your primary goal for the year. So once you've identified and said, I've assessed my clients and I've realized this is my client's greatest weakness. You then say, well, that will be my greatest goal for the year to develop that components of, of fitness for my clients. Together with obviously add-ons of what your client's other goals are. So all of the components of fitness will assist you in achieving that primary goal for the year. That's what you want to achieve for them. Remember, they can't come to you and say, next week, Tuesday, I want to be lean and slender and have you know, muscles you know, for five kilometers long. It's not possible. So you have to ensure that it is a long-term plan with shorter, medium and short-term plans or goals that will assist you in achieving that client's actual final goal. So with this said, what do we have, how do we structure this whole one year cycle? Is as we know, you break it down into shorter term goals. So you say, right, let's say for example, your client wants to build muscle and that's their primary goal for the year. You're going to ensure that your primary training exercises will ensure that your client will do exercises that will ensure that they do build muscle. That just makes more sense. If your client said they want to come and do more, uh, they, let's say they want to improve their cardiovascular fitness as their primary goal, you did the cardiovascular test and you realize the fitness isn't where they would like it, you then incorporate and ensure you do primarily cardiovascular aerobic work that will help improving their fitness. So looking at the entire year. So with that said, you can't just walk in and say, all right, I know the best way to improve muscle is hypertrophy and strength training, and if I do that, that's all we need to do. If your client is a beginner, we have to make sure they have the basis on which they can build and therefore incorporate hypertrophy and, tra and strength training exercises so that goal, that goal will be achieved. So this also helps in preventing injuries other than just jumping in in like the midpoints instead of starting where you should. If your client has been training previously and they already have a good basis to work on, then why can't you start with hypertrophy and strength training? Of course you can. Right, so I'm going to explain the whole component, the whole structure of an annual cycle as if we have a beginner. Obviously if you have a more advanced client, you just know, oh well they've done that bit, we'll move on and we'll start there with our clients. Don't forget, each year, you develop each component of fitness as the one develops on the other. So you've made a base this year, but next year doesn't mean you just keep on sticking to the upper level of your, um, you know, of the spectrum of fitness. You have to make sure that you go back and make sure the foundation of the client is still good and you don't spend as much time as you originally would have with your client developing you know, the lower range of the components of fitness, but you have to do some training in regards to maintaining that and making sure the base is still stable and strong on which you're developing your higher range or your higher end type of components of fitness, which is the higher intensity components of fitness. Right, so now we have a beginner and they want to start training with you and their primary goal is then going to be developed over a one year cycle. So you have your goal for the year and you've identified that. And now you have to go and say, I understand I have to incorporate um, muscular fitness exercises. So that's whether it's own body weight exercises, exercises with machines or free weights. You have to ensure that the weight you use and the repetitions you ask your clients is appropriate in a progressive manner going from the low end of the spectrum to the high end of the fitness spectrum range. So with resistance training, the lower end of the range will be the lowest intensity. So resistance about the weight you lift, right? Whether it's your own body weight or external weight that you might be holding in your hands or you're using a machine as resistance. So you use a lighter weight. Because you're using a lighter weight, start out endurance exercises, which is the beginning of the spectrum. The lighter weight will have more repetitions that you can do because it's so light you can move it so many times. And what that endurance work helps you to develop 
is developing a sound basis on which we can develop more intense, um, you know, on which we can do more intense work later. So you do one to three sets and you do about 12 or more repetitions, which is your endurance range, and that will be the start of your spectrum. That will be your first thing that you want to develop and improve. Now the amount of weeks you want to kind of focus on improving that specific component of fitness depends on kind of, you know, how much how you want to structure it. This is, this is where there's no correct way of doing it. It's following the principles, and as long as it scientifically is sound, there's nothing wrong with it. So someone will say, well, I want to set, set out the first four weeks for endurance, and then see if I can't do a second week of four weeks doing endurance again, and then just build on what we've developed the first four weeks. So we're going to have three weeks of work and one week of recovery so the body can get stronger and I'm going to have another three weeks of work and another week of recovery after that and then we would have had two cycles of improving the same component of fitness. Right, so someone else can come in and say but I would like to develop my component, my first component of fitness over a period of six weeks and that's also fine, there's nothing wrong with it. Right, so they say I'm going to send out six weeks for it as long as the progression that occurs during the six weeks is appropriate using either the step method, so one week is higher or more, has more repetitions for endurance and more sets for endurance exercises than the previous week with recovery at the end of those six weeks, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Okay, so at the end of the day it will just be a different approach and it will depend on how your client responds to that idea you had in planning your, your program to see whether or not you might have a one week during that six week period instead of just going higher, higher and higher, like more repetitions, it might be, well, let's have three weeks in a row we have using more repetitions, but we're going to drop one week slightly down maybe, just to give them some recovery if they're struggling, and then you can carry on week four and five can be then slightly higher again, and week six can be a recovery week as well. So there's always interpretation to this plan that we've got. We can always just have a plan and then adjust as we go. So our first component of fitness is then muscular endurance. While you're then developing muscular endurance training, our first lowest end of lowest intensity cardiovascular exercise is our long distance exercises, which is a low intensity heart rate with long duration of, depending how fit your client is. If they can only do five minutes in the beginning, then they can only run or walk or cycle for five minutes. But our goal will be to get them to do it for a longer period of time as they go from one week to the next. So you'll say, great, well you may be, just as an example, remember your client might start and they can do 10 minutes already. So you just see how long they can go for now and try and motivate them for each week to have a slightly longer duration in what they're doing. Right, so that's then the first components of fitness that you want to develop. After that, as we move along from the lowest intensity to higher intensity in the continuum of exercise and fitness, we're now looking at resistance training that is called and referred to as hypertrophy training. Hypertrophy training is high volume of work, little rest, so high repetitions, high sets, well high sets, yes, and then a moderate intensity for your weight that in which you use. So in endurance training, you're using a lot of repetitions, but your sets is only up until a maximum of three sets. For hypertrophy training, you can do up to six sets and using a heavier weight, doing similar repetition ranges that you had done previously. So if you did endurance training, you did 15 repetitions, now you do hypertrophy training and you might do, let's say, 13 or 12 repetitions, which is similar in repetition, but you're using a heavier weight doing that and you have less rest in between each set, that makes it more work that was done. So that's what hypertrophy training is. So we want to progress during hypertrophy training for the amount of weeks you've set out to achieve that goal. You've identified and said, well, I want to ensure that the amount of work my client is doing, which is the combination of the amount of repetitions, the amount of sets, and the weight the client will be using during those weeks, will progressively become more with some recovery after, at the end of those amount of weeks. Now, just remember, you don't want to extend it for like 12 weeks. It's like too long. 12 weeks, the person will overtrain if they're just going heavier, 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 or more and more and more and more work. 
they will burn out. You need that change. So try and stick rather to a four to six week duration during which we know it takes about four to six weeks to have a true improvement and you can have an assessment at the end of that six weeks to kind of look back and reflect on what you've done and did you achieve your goal for that period you've put out. So you've now got four weeks or six weeks of endurance, you've got four or six weeks of hypertrophy training and now you're going to have four to six weeks moving on to the next, so yeah, moving on to the next um, component of fitness regarding to resistance training, which is then strength training. Now strength training is kind of looking at saying you've now developed muscle during hypertrophy training and you've prepared your joints during endurance and hypertrophy training so it can cope with heavier work or high intensity work. So now the main goal in strength training is heavy, heavy, heavy. As heavy as you can, it's at a higher range of your one repetition maximum range, which remember one repetition maximum is the maximum amount of weight you can lift for one movement, so in one repetition of that exercise. So we're using very heavy weights and we're not doing a lot of repetitions because it's not possible to do a lot because it's so heavy in doing that. So now we're developing strength exercises, we're developing strength of the muscles that you have incorporated or, you know, of the muscles that you have developed previously. So that gets again a four to six week period and that's what you develop during that period there. Right? Then the next, sp the next part will be what is the next or the highest level or a higher level amongst the components of fitness range will be from strength then moving on to power which says power is harder than strength because you're using maybe a slightly lighter weight but we're going to ask you to do that same movement really fast. And the speed makes it so hard that's the extra intensity that's added to it. So generally for athletes, that's where we want to get to. We want to, if they have an explosive sport, develop their endurance and their hypertrophy and then their strength and then give them this ability to move the muscles that they've got fast so they can explode and react faster than the person next to them. So with general population, we just want to give them the ability in order to do it. It's all about developing their ability, right? So now you're developing power and it's you're adding speed to what you've done. You're working within the repetition and sets ranges that's provided to you in your module and you ensure there's a progressive increase amongst that spectrum of more repetitions or sets and ensuring the speed stays faster as you go from one week to the next. It can be a four to six week period and making sure one week is more than the other but you have a recovery at the end. Then from there, we may have to, can move on to um, power endurance. So power endurance has three different subcategories. You have short-term power endurance which is technically the basic power endurance repetition ranges that we have available in your module and then you have your medium-term and long-term power endurance. Now to put this in perspective of everyday exercises that we do is that's basically what you do at CrossFit when you go. You do a lot of explosive work, you have to get it, you've got a time in which you have to do it for example and that is basically power endurance work. That is the continuum or the range of the spectrum of the continuum that you are developing and improving. So for our athletes, for their medium and their long term repetition ranges, it will be between about, you know, in a range of between 30 and 50 repetitions for your um, power, medium term power endurance, and your long term power endurance will be 100 repetitions or more. Now technically 100, technically 100 repetitions or more is more kind of when you're doing strides, if you're doing sprints for example for an athlete or you're doing something that's more functional in manner than saying okay I'm doing 100 squats for example, that might just be a risk for overuse injury. So be careful in the way in which you do that. Right, so from there you then incorporate which duration of your power endurance you want to incorporate especially when, when, you, when you work with an athlete. An athlete that's maybe 100 meter sprint is really considered improving their short term power endurance with maybe some medium term power endurance. Someone that might be an endurance runner is more interested in developing their long term power endurance because they obviously require the endurance more so. So it's a longer duration, it's a longer type of activity that they're doing. We're just looking maybe for general population clients that's not doing sport to say, well, where can you go to? Do you have good short-term power endurance? And if you've developed that, let's move on to the next. Let's develop your medium-term power endurance. Are we maintaining your short-term power endurance? So on and so forth, moving across the spectrum from low to high intensity work. So the same that we've started discussing was we have our endurance, our hypertrophy. 
we have strength, then power, and power endurance work. And that's what your goal can be, working on you know, a spectrum. If your client has a particular goal, you're going to ensure the duration on which you work on that guy that wants you to build muscle, you're going to do a lot more work, many more, um, let's say, no, we call them meso cycles, so smaller cycles, groups of weeks that you want to spend on developing hypertrophy and strength versus doing power work, for example. Yes, power work has a good, uh, you know, it obviously So when you develop your annual training program, you want to ensure then if you have a client that has a specific goal and they want to develop strength, or let's say strength or they want to build more muscle, you're going to spend more time focusing on that. So more weeks will be dedicated in developing your muscle size and doing hypertrophy and doing strength training and some power work will actually translate in developing that like, capability. But you can't say, Day one till the end of your year will be only hypertrophy training. It, it doesn't really make sound sense if we look at the full spectrum and range of motion. If you want to and you have someone that's competing, they will always have a progressive manner in which they work amongst the different components of fitness in order to make sure there's no injuries that occur. Because if you're injured, you in any case can't train and the muscles will, like, you know, will lose your muscles, which is obviously a concern and that's obviously working against the goal that you've got or if you have someone that has um, a goal to improve their cardiovascular fitness you're going to spend a lot more time doing endurance repetition ranges and making sure you do more aerobic work to ensure that will help you achieve your end goal for that year to make sure you are fitter you have a better cardiovascular fitness capability when you do your vo2 max the vo2 max level will improve so like I said, you have to kind of take it and stay, take a step back and say, am I going to, in this annual training session, am I going to incorporate each and every component of fitness? Or am I going to work amongst only certain components of fitness, such as endurance, hypertrophy, and strength work for a few weeks? So it might be six weeks endurance and hyper, well, let's say endurance work, another six weeks of, of hypertrophy work, then six weeks of strength work. And then you want to start again. So the next few weeks, will be let's now, we have the foundation of doing one cycle of hypertrophy for let's say six weeks and then another six weeks of um, the hypertrophy and six weeks of strength. Now why can't we do it again? So you're building on the foundation you put there during the previous you know, six week cycles that you had. Now you're going to do maybe four weeks of endurance and another six weeks of hypertrophy and another six weeks of strength. And that will be then, okay, why can't we do that again and just work on top of what we've already developed during the previous six week cycles that we had. And now we're going to do and develop again on that. So there's nothing wrong with developing certain components of fitness and only focusing on that maybe even the lower end of the spectrum or the high end of the spectrum if you have a high, a very well developed, a very advanced, um, you know, person that's been training for many years or advanced athletes that you'll be focusing on a different component or different range of the spectrum of components of fitness so it might be on the upper end or it might be on the lower end as long as it's focusing on what your client's goals are and if you want to focus on the upper end and that your client's goal is to say I want to like win you know one or other competition and they really require um, like explosive you know muscular ability then you can't say great day one walk into explosive work you have to understand i first have to develop your muscular endurance then we're going to do some hypertrophy and build some muscle and once we've got the muscle we're going to develop some strength on those muscles and then we're going to develop the power of those muscles and you can work forward and backwards you can even say right i don't just want to do one week one you know one set of four weeks and that's the only time i'll do endurance you can say i want to do two weeks of endurance then i want to do four weeks of strength and then i want to do another four weeks of strength of, of endurance and then more strength so you can do like you can work forward and backwards from one part of the spectrum as you go along so you can do hypertrophy or you can do strength oh sorry so you can start with some endurance work for a few weeks then then some hypertrophy work for some a few weeks and then do one or two weeks of strength and you can go back to hypertrophy training and then do some strength work and you can do some endurance work and do some strength work as long as you're kind of playing around and say but you understand once i've dedicated that duration to that component of fitness i want to build on what i've done previously so that there's a better capability as we move forward 
So that's really the whole range. You work from low intensity to high intensity, whether it's resistance training or cardiovascular training, and you ensure you work according to the client's goals, spending more time on this part of the spectrum your client is interested in, and you ensure that there is progressive development, whether it's from one year to the next, or whether it is working on one part of the continuum and working a few weeks going forward and backwards on the spectrum, for example, hypertrophy, endurance, and then strength, and then doing some hypertrophy again and strength again, working forward and back, understanding that the changeover will assist the body not getting used to doing exactly the same work each and every day, but it will assist that your body can adapt faster, there's a change, and it can't predict what will happen to it on the day. So thank you guys, I hope this will help you to design your programs a bit better. This is the start of the whole process, this is helping you put out like the layout for the year, and then hereafter we'll have a bit more of a discussion of how do you design each week to make sure that week will achieve the goal for that, or that each day will achieve the goal for that week. Thank you.